the world. Okay, I'm gonna show you the best bread recipe in the world, I think, that gives you the maximum flavor for the least amount of effort. This is a variation on the no knead method, uh, and it's basically about 10 minutes work spread over 20 hours. I thought this would be useful if you're like stuck in the house for some reason for a while. And also baking your own bread is so useful because you can turn all of these as raw ingredients into amazing delicious bread, saves you having to go out to the shops to buy bread which won't be as good or as tasty as the thing we're gonna make. So here's what we're gonna use. We're going to use a Dutch oven to do the baking and a stainless steel bowl to do the mixing. The ingredients are three cups of unbleached all-purpose flour, or if you want, you can substitute one of those cups of flour with a cup of whole wheat flour, a quarter of a teaspoon of instant yeast, one and a half teaspoons of table salt, a cup of water. And the secret to this recipe is using vinegar and beer to give it that fermented sourdough kind of flavor. So we'll use one tablespoon of white vinegar and then half a cup of cheap lager. It doesn't need to be anything special. So I'm using Miller High Life, the champagne of self-delusion. And you don't want a beer that's too dark or too flavorful. So cheap lager, anything, uh, coconut is good, whatever you've got around. Um, okay, let's get started. We're gonna sieve and mix the dry ingredients and then pour in the liquids. Now, the mixing is super easy. We don't need to be very thorough because we'll be leaving it for eight to 18 hours to rest, which means the flour has loads of time to absorb all of the moisture. This is good to do in the evening and leave overnight, or in the before times when we used to go to work, you could mix this in the morning and then bake it in the evening. So just give it a quick stir like I'm doing here and bring it together with your hands. You're aiming for a kind of shaggy ball-like consistency, like we can see here. Then you want to cover it, this bowl has a handy lid, but you can also use cling film or saran wrap. Now it's good to put it somewhere nice and warm to activate the yeast, like an airing cupboard, near a radiator, or like I'm doing here in an oven that I've warmed just to slightly above room temperature. Okay, after the long resting time, we're gonna take the dough out, wash the bowl, and give the dough a little bit of kneading. I said that this was based on the no knead method, but you actually want to do a little bit of kneading, but you don't really need to do much just enough to even out the dough and form a boule. A boule is just a fancy baking term for a ball, and you make it by pulling four corners into the middle of the dough, flip it over, and do this kind of twisting motion to pull it into a ball shape. It helps here if the base is a little bit tacky so the interior of the dough kind of winds up with some tension. Then put it back in the mixing bowl on top of a sheet of baking parchment, We'll leave this to prove for another two hours, and for the last half an hour we need to preheat our ovens. Put the Dutch oven in your normal oven and whack it up to the highest setting, which for me was 500 Fahrenheit. We want our Dutch oven to have enough time to absorb as much heat as possible. Just before we bake the dough we want to sprinkle a little bit of flour on top and then score the top with a sharp knife. Then take the steaming hot Dutch oven out of the main oven and carefully transfer the dough into it, put the lid back on, and then put them in the oven but reduce the temperature to 425 Fahrenheit and bake for exactly 30 minutes. When that's done, leave it in the oven but take the lid off and bake for another 5 to 10 minutes to get the top of the bread nice and brown and crispy. And then your lovely loaf of bread is done. Doesn't that look good? And there we have it, our freshly baked loaf of bread, and they taste absolutely amazing, which I'm sure you'll agree if you make it. And if, if you do go and make one, please send me a photo. I'd love to see what they look like. You can share them on Instagram or Twitter. I'm at Dominic Wallman at both of those. And uh, yeah, take care of yourselves out there, and I'll be back to making my normal science videos again next week. All right, bye.